thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are far too kind. If you do not know me, my name is Afshin Joseph Panjalizade Marseille Badaramurad Junior the Fifth. What a name. So, I'm here today to tell you a little bit story about challenges, adversity, games, volunteering. Some of you in the room may know me as Afshin, professional. Some people may know me on the social side as Af. Some people don't know me at all. Everybody here wears three masks. Everybody. The Japanese proverb says we have three masks. The first mask we show to the world. Everybody. You're wearing it right now. The second mask we show to our close friends and family. And the third mask we never show anyone at all. Now to put this into social media context, our first mask is our LinkedIn page. It says, hello, my name's Afshin. I'm dedicated, hardworking, and a team player. Please give me another job in April. <laughs> your second mask is your Instagram. It's your happy life, the side that you want to show your friends and family. Sometimes it's a little bit filtered, but hey, I'm hashtag loving life. <laughs> and your third mask is your Facebook. It's a closed profile. You don't let anybody see it, and it's all personal to you. Now, to put these into work context, let's say your, f your first mask is your professional mask. It says, hi, Clayton. I appreciate your decision, but I disagree. <laughs> your second mask is saying, hey, Lauren, how are you? What did you get up to this weekend? Great, I love your hair like that. <laughs> and your third mask is the one that you don't show anyone. It's the one where you're preparing at home, before work, in the mirror, and you're doing your hair. And you say, I am a strong, independent woman. <laughs> I'm going to walk straight up to Sanjay today and I'll say, Hey, you better start respecting me. Things are going to change around here, Sanjay. <laughs> but you never do. <laughs> so today, today, you're going to have to get the real me. I can't inspire you without showing you the real me. So I will take off my professional mask. Put on the real me. Hello, my name is Af. I'm 31 years old. I'm from England. <laughs> no hecklers. I enjoy sports, movies, and drinking cups of tea with the cream. This is me. Should break out a song there, shouldn't I? Look out, cause here I come. The greatest showman fans in the room. Where did it all begin? London 2012. As a fresh-faced student, straight out of university, I got my games maker uniform, and I was going to be a volunteer at London 2012. Now, it was some of the best two weeks of my life. You are running round. That's me. That is me. Live on BBC, I'm famous. <laughs> and I enjoyed every minute of it. Cleaning all the boxers' gloves and the sweat off the head guards. Catching the spit in the buckets. <laughs> Running around collecting the pin badges. We know how fun that is. But there was one job that I wanted to do. And I wanted to carry the flags. I wanted to carry the flags of the boxers into the ring. I thought I'd be really good at it. And after ten days of working really hard as a volunteer, I got to carry the flag! Come on! It was a proud moment, and the competition manager that let me do this did not know the impact that he was having on a little volunteer. And like us, oh, we are going to have major impacts on people without them even knowing it. I went on, and this guy, Paul Porter, his name is, I tried to say today, if you think you're too small to make an impact, try sleeping with a mosquito in the room. You will make an impact. Three years later, and a few more games, and I'd make, made it to Baku in Azerbaijan. I'd never even heard of the country, but I got invited. Now, who would fly seven hours to a new country to volunteer? Some people will. Some people are desperate to work at these games like they are here in the World Games. We are doing them a favour as much as they are doing us one. 
and look at me again, carrying the flag. So good at it. Left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg. I am the best flag carrier out there. <laughs> and here is where I met the competition manager for Rio 2016, the Olympic Games, the pinnacle. And I had to leave my apartment. I got offered a four-month job in Rio. But I would have to leave my job to roll the dice, take a leap of faith, a gamble. Nothing arranged after the games. My sister sent me this card. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting to get on your way. And I made it to Rio. What a fabulous city if we've got the Brazilians in the room today. It was great. It's lots of adventure and challenge. And then, let the games begin. The Olympic Games. I managed to get a ticket for the opening ceremony at the American R Stadium. What a time to be alive, I posted on Facebook. 300 likes. <laughs> now, the Olympic Games are a long, hard two weeks, sometimes with two sessions per day, and it takes its toll. But, I got there for the main protocol of every athlete. Every gold medalist, the official protocol was go up to the medal ceremony, stand on the podium, collect your medal, sing the national anthem, and then come back of house to have a selfie with me. <laughs> now, I missed the last boxing final. I missed it. I had a bad back. I had to go to the Medi Clinic and a quick shot of injection of antibiotics, and I was there in time to get the last selfie of Nicola Adams there in the middle. Now, the end of the games can be quite an anxious time. Some people are probably already feeling it. What am I going to do? What next? It's quite an empty feeling. There's nothing left in the room. All the look signage is gone. The athletes have gone home and the volunteers are back to work. And as on the last day of these games, in the empty change rooms, there was a red hat on the side. Brilliant. It was from Cuba. And now I love the Cuban boxing team. The Cubans to boxing are like the Brazilians to football. They're like the Kenyans of long running. They're like the New Zealand team to rugby. And, the <laughs> and they're like the English to cricket. The English to cricket. <laughs> Sorry, the Indians are about that. So <laughs> I had this hat, it was brilliant. All of a sudden, the Cuban coach, he ran back in, and he said, ah, oh, amigo, my hat. I gave it back to him and he said, thank you for everything you've done in these last two weeks. Thank you, as a volunteer and as a worker, we could not achieve these things without the support of you. He said, no one can achieve anything without support or a good team, not even Olympic gold medalists. Something that stuck with me. Now, like I said, everybody starts getting anxious at the end of the games. What next? People start networking here and networking there, applying for jobs here. You don't know what city you'll be in or what games you'll go to. But again, I've made it to the closing ceremony at the American R. I wasn't anxious. I knew what I was doing next. I was going traveling. I was going to go traveling around South America, starting in Argentina going all the way around Brazil and Peru and everything. I had my Lonely Planet guide and I was set to go. I'm going to go get lost in South America. But first, I had two weeks on Copacabana Beach. Amazing. Great times and that is, who, uh, where's Jan? Is that Copacabana or Ipanema? Tell me. It's a beautiful beach in Rio. <laughs> Next, I was going to Iguazu Falls. Look at it. I'd seen it on Google Images. It was amazing. The 9th of September, I was going. I was flying with my backpack on, my passport ready. But first, the day before, my back was still hurting. I went to the doctors again for another antibiotic shot. Now, my friend who I was meeting in Argentina, he said, come to Argentina, get it sorted. Argentinian steak is better than Brazilian steak. <laughs> Messi is better than Neymar. And Maradona is better than Pele. And Argentinian doctors are better than Brazilian doctors. But I couldn't make the flight. I went to the doctors. 
I had some tests. Three hours later, he told me that he'd found a tumour and that rather than fly to Argentina, he needed to do surgery or fly home to England the next day. I came out of Copacabana Hospital, Copperdor Hospital, not feeling too good. And I texted my friend who came to the hospital with me to translate. And she said, tomorrow, we need to see him in his clinic to explain for you. I said, but did he tell you why? I'm feeling vomit and crying. I'm in class. Calma. The doctor told me what's wrong. And the next thing, do you know? Surgery. Do you want a Subway sandwich? <laughs> I was at one of my lowest points in my life. And this lady in Brazil said, do I want a Subway sandwich? I don't think you understand. Yes, I understood. We need to relax now. The doctor told me it's a tumour. Did he tell you that? And again, we go on to the Subway sandwich. No matter the problem, you always have to eat. Nine hours later, I was on a flight back to England, to London. God save the Queen. I turned up at my mum's house and my grandparents were in. My grandma said, ah, oh, he's come back early, he's missing his mum. My mum said, he's run out of money. My granddad said, he's been deported. <laughs> then, one of the most difficult things I had to do was tell my mum I'd come back three months early as they'd found a tumour and I needed to go to the hospital the next day. Would you like a cup of tea? She said. Now, what is it with these people offering me Subway sandwiches and cups of tea when I'm at my lowest moment. The next day, I went to the hospital, had more scans, and got the news that I did not want. It was cancer. And the cancer had spread. I didn't know what to do, so I put on Facebook this status. Half next challenge, cancer. Yeah, you read that correctly. What? Yeah, that's what I said too. No way. I said that as well. Monday I saw a consultant and then had an ultrasound. Fortunately, the primary cancer had spread to the secondary place of my body. Tomorrow morning I'm getting surgery and then I'll start a chemotherapy session. I had a great response. I had a support team and I needed this. 300 comments. Everybody, you got this, Af. You got this. You got this, Af. You got this. Everybody, celebrities, messaging me on Instagram. You got this, Af. Olympic gold medalists. You got this, Af. Anderson Silva, UFC champion. You got this. Adam Alana, signed football shirt with the Liverpool team. You got this. Anthony Joshua, the world heavyweight boxing champion. You got this, bro. Everybody was in my corner. Everybody wanted to be in my corner, so I got these blue wristbands. It says on it, you got this, and we have a laugh. And I sold thousands. I needed these people in my team and the support network around me. It is hard work. I've been quite comical at the start, and now this is where my comedy turned to kind of a tragedy. I sat for seven hours a day, for nine weeks, in a hospital. Rather than being on a beach in Rio or down in Guazi Falls in Argentina, my plan had changed, my dreams had changed, and I lost my hair. And it was a difficult time, but we got this. I was still trying to make jokes. It is not easy. These pictures aren't nice, and my sister took these pictures to remind me of the bad times. But this is the reality. It's not easy. But, nine weeks, chemotherapy, 7 12, 2016, the first day of the rest of my life, I got the all clear. And my mum was outside the chemotherapy ward to give me that hug. We got this. Why am I telling you this today? Because we're all facing challenges behind the mask. Today is an important day for me, December 12th, 
I have a five-year remission plan. I go to the hospital every three months to have more checks and scans. But today, two years. I am two years cancer-free! So, bring it all back to you. January 6th, we have lockdown. Don't leave. <laughs> I challenge you to be the best that you can be. There's nothing average about these games, so why would we work average? Always be kind. Remember to be kind. You never know what's going on behind someone's mask. Support each other. No one achieved anything without support. Not even Olympic gold medalists. Eat. Remember to eat. Subway. Subways are optional. Drink. No matter the problem, there's always time for a cup of tea. Sleep. Show up early. Work hard, but remember to have a laugh. We want this to be fun for everybody. The more fun it is, the more enjoyable it is. Rise to the challenge, no matter how big or small. Make an impact. You are making impacts on these people. Take photos. These are your memories. What a time to be alive. Am I right? And the last message you take home with you today. That first day of games, when you're nervous, you're anxious. Have you done enough planning? Remember, you've got this. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.